Now, uh, to talk about impermanence, then three topics. The first we talk about is like uh, the death is imminent. So when we say death is imminent, that help us to free grasping of permanence. Thinking we're going to have a long period of time. It's, sometimes you say it's automatic thinking, you know, I'm going to believe. It's okay, but we're not going to be here forever. You can think I'm going to believe for as long as I want, that's I'm not rejecting. But we, sometimes we forget almost we're going to die. That's the mistake. Yeah? Like when we forget I'm going to die, that person kind of very easy to get distracted. You know? Think I'm going to have plenty of time. I can do next time. So always we delay, we postpone. The reason we delay postpone, no other reason, because only is laziness. Yeah? Laziness is like we say, one of the biggest uh, the robber that steal our time. Yeah? Uh, so, first uh, topic is like a, death is imminent. And then second is, we know we're going to die, but none of us know how long we're going to live. It's, life is uncertainty. Yeah? So uncertainty, like our life is like a candle in the windy place. You never know when it's going to blow out. Our life is like a bubble. Never know when it's going to blast. You know? If you look in the life, it's so fragile. One thing go wrong, your life's gone. You know? We know like a strong as an ego once. You know? Life is so fragile. So that's the second topic. And the third, uh, after death, what's most benefit for you? So. Like in that, we need to a little bit more emphasize of the reincarnation. If you don't have a concept of reincarnation, if you don't believe, then time of the death is like a say it's the end of the life. Nothing going to happen. There's no feeling. Yeah, that's a one belief. That's a belief system. There's no logical system. Uh, then we talk about more on that. They say like after death or time of the death, most beneficial is the Dharma. So time of the death, it really gives you peace of mind, it's a dharma. After your death, something you can carry that helps you future life, is a dharma. So, so three uh, topics going to cover the impermanence of life. Uh, the first... <coughs> uh, What we say, like a, all compounded phenomena, yeah. Every compounded phenomena is or is or are yes. is impermanence. Yeah, Every, all the compounded phenomena is impermanence. So it means our life is a compounded phenomena. So it's an impermanent nature. Yeah. Uh, then in the sutra stated, like a, uh, all three realms. Like I've talked about desire realm, form realm, and formless realms. All these three realms, life is like a cloud, like a cloud. Very easy to form and very easy to separate it. So constantly, if you look in the cloud, moment to moment it changes. Never stays the same. So our life is a, a moment to moment it changes because the we are talking about there's a two aspects of impermanence. Subtle aspect of impermanence and the gross aspect of impermanence. We only I only see the gross impermanence. But this gross impermanence is a result of a subtle impermanence. Like since this morning up to today up now, we still think it's the same person, but the reality we change a whole lot, you know. Uh, so in this way, uh, the life is like an autumn cloud, yeah, first. And then second, the birth and the death is like a watching movie. With, within a short period of time, how much we can see changes life in the movie. So while we watch a movie, it seems like go on and on forever, but the reality only just half, one and a half hour time. Or even sometimes a half an hour, like a, some kind of 
uh, uh, drama show, you know. Within half an hour, you see like so many happening, but actually it's a short period of time. So same like a, we met in our born 50 years ago, 60 years ago, feels like long, but if you really look, it's very short. Like I mentioned, the person that you lost the last few years, you look back, it they just feels like they just came and gone. While they're alive, we think that we've been there with that long period of time, but actually look back, it's just a very short period of time. So in this way, life is like a movie, like a constant changes. And then our life is like a, uh, like a lightning. The moment it gets lighting, it gets brightening, and then the moment it's gone, the darkness. So it's just come very quick and then leave very quick. So it's uh, not such a reliable, you know, un, un, kind of reliable kind of life. Uh, so in this way, you need to know our life is so fragile. We know kind of creating f of fear, but we rather we know, uh, if we know this one, what help us is like a less clinging, less attachment. Because it's not worth it. I mentioned like a, if something, object is going to be there, it's worthwhile to grasp on it, clinging on it. The object is not going to be there, then grasping is going to make you more disappointed. Yeah? So in this reason, we need to, so the object, the reason we grasp it so much, we think object is, we think is permanent. Forever, that's the reason we grasp it. If we know it's not uh, permanent, we're not going to grasp it. For instance, when we're traveling, we live in a hotel, we live in a guest house, we live in a motel. While we live in there, we're just enjoying, but we're not grasping on it. Why are we not grasping? Because we know this is not mine. It's just a temporary place to rest, temporary place to break. So that's the reason we're not grasping. But when we come home, we're grasping, because it's mine. You know? Then something happened to the house, we get, like a, they get suffer. You know? So like, like a more bigger you got the body, much easier to hurt you. So really, we can we extend the opportunity to suffering in reality. So I'm not talking about the physical in terms of size. I'm talking about the, in terms of the attachment. More you attach, then you're more it's creating opportunity to hurt yourself. You know. So we're not saying like you should not have a loss of wealth. We're not saying you should have a loss of all this. It's okay to have everything. It's your karma because your virtuous karma creating all this great opportunity. It's great to have a lot of things. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but as soon you grasp me on it, then you start the problems. You know? So that's the so in this way, the wealth you got is one thing. Attachment to wealth is another thing. So you, these two you need to be separate. You know, I'm talking about this separate. Well, I'm not saying like you should not have a wealth. You should give away. That's not going to work. Sometimes people have a wrong idea about renunciation. Renunciation means like I have to give away everything. That's the wrong idea. You know, that's not talking about renunciation. So if we come later on, what's the relaxation? But anyway, we uh, talk about the attachment. Yeah. Uh, so in anyway, so what, if we know love is uh, uh, like a very fast, like a lightning, then it's not worth it to grasp on it. Just enjoy each and every moment, and then sometimes just use this each and every moment in a virtuous way. If you use a virtuous way, whether you expect or not, result will follow. You know. Without creating the cause, you just expect something going to happen, it never going to happen. You know? So that's where uh, life is uh, short as like the lightning. And then life is like a, uh, how fast we're running into the departure. This is a more faster than, we talk about that some plane is so fast, they fly faster than sound. Actually our life is even much faster than that. You know? Every second, millions of kilometer speed, you know, that fast we run our life. Like we call sometimes a steep waterfall, like a life that constantly running, like a getting older, getting kind of all, and towards the end. So this is like a, once you run out the time, they're never going to come back, never going to be returned. So if you look at that point of view, each minute, each second is so priceless. No matter how many billions of dollars you got, what you lost the time you cannot buy. Even you got a whole lot of wealth, that wealth cannot buy the whatever you lost in the past. It's lost for a lot forever. So in this reason, a person who realizes 
of this preciousness of time, do so that we become like a great practitioners. You know, that's like if you really understand the impermanence, then there's no how to practice dharma. But person who not really understand the impermanence, no experience of impermanence, then very hard to be dumb practitioners. You no, know, we think so. So many things have to do out there. More important than dharma. But the really what's important out there is more important to suffering, not happiness. But right in front of us, we have the opportunity to practice dharma to create. We give up, and then something else we think is the cause of happiness. You know, this is a common kind of what we think. So in this way, like a uh, reflect this uh, few example, like a uh, life is like an autumn cloud. Life is like a watching movie. Life is like a lightning. Life is like a still waterfall. You know, so that's a kind of a, uh, impermanence. Not only just our life. Just think about some of the great realized person, like uh, great Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. They also came in this world and gone. So compared to them, our life is very fragile. So how much we expect going to be forever here? You know, it's a totally misconceptual if you think it that way. You know, so we consciously may not think I'm going to be forever, but subconsciously we feel that way. So it's kind of mis. That's kind of when we think I'm going to be here forever. That really kind of wastes so much our time. You know, we think oh, I have a plenty of time. Even I don't have a time to do retreat or practice. I may come next year. Next year. So I mentioned like, uh, who knows whether we're going to be here next year or not? You know, life is so um, unpredictable. Uh, that's one. And then, mm, so in this way, that one need to message is like, uh, we need to learn death is imminent. That's important. Uh, there's, if there's, if there, there is no place you can go in free from the death. Like uh, they say, some great rishis or meditator use their clear ones. Look at any place, I can go and free from the dead. They never found, never found in the past any place that you go and free from the dead. Uh, never find, going to find in the future. You no. Know? So as soon, what we're talking is like uh, again, don't mix up. We talk about two. Usually, we Buddhists we talk about conventional, conventional reality and absolute reality. So conventional, what we talk about the conceptual aspect. When as long as we have this conceptual mind, within this conceptual there is the birth and the death, because the birth and the death is not exist apart from one's mind. It's also a state of the mind. So as long as we have this conceptual mind, dualistic mind, there is the birth, there is the death. Then one day we completely free this conceptual mind, non-conceptual state. Then there's no birth, there's no death, because the birth and death is just cons- conceptual things. So this reason, uh, as long as we have this uh, conceptual, uh, conceptual mind, conceptualization or dualistic mind, there is a birth and death. So this reason, like uh, uh, what we're talking about, like a uh, like a nimanakaya form of the Buddha, you know, physical body has a birth and a death. But when we come to the dharmakaya, it's a non-conceptual state. In that state, there's no birth and death. Uh, so, it's a, so don't be mixed up these two things. So in this way, we're not going to find any place there where there's the free from the death. 